everybody and welcome to my July TBR video. Um, I'm going to do things a, a little different. Um, you, I may be filming this in a little bit of segments so it might look a lot more edited. If I look like I'm in a different spot that's probably why. So I might be in a different spot and that's, that's probably why. Um, I'm going to pull three from my TBR jar and see if I can get through these. I almost made it through the three that I pulled last month. I'm a very big mood reader, so that happens. But um, I am in the middle of the last one of the three. So, I mean, I did fairly well with trying to read those. Um, what I'm doing with my TBR jar is, <clears throat> excuse me, is I am, um, trying to read one e-arc that I need to read, one e-book that I have either gotten for free that's on my Kindle or I've bought, and then one book from my shelves because I seem to always prioritize a lot of um, the arcs and things like that and not my actual books. And so I thought I would just do it that way so I'd have three different things that I could pull from. These have different prompts and stuff on them, and then I will find a book, hopefully, that I can read that will go with the prompts. I don't know which one is going to be the paperback, which one's going to be the ebook, and which one's going to be like the. Well, it'll be probably an e arc or an arc because I do have some actual paperback arcs, so we'll do it that way. But I do want it to be at least I'm pulling one review book and then two of my actually own book. <coughs> own books excuse me <clears throat> allergies are running amok so that's what I'm gonna do with this so I will pull um, the prompts and then I will go and look for a book and then I will come back and I will show you the book and then hopefully that will help me figure out and I can get some of these to go with um, readathons and uh, little fun games that I'm doing this go around um, <clears throat> I can't remember the name of the group. Let's see if I can find a... Oh, okay. It's called the uh, Rapid Readers Book Club. It's on Facebook. And um, I've joined this, and this month they are doing uh, this word path thing. And they had, like, f I think five different cards you could pick from. And I picked this one because it was really easy. It was the first one, and... Um, you can read down you have to go from start to finish and so you have to make a path to go and you can do it however you want but with this one it's real easy and you could just read four books and down and you <clears throat> finished your path <clears throat> excuse me man and so I decided to uh, to try this one like it's just got a uh, readers choice fiction a book you have owned but haven't read and then a backlist title. So some of these that I pull from the TBR jar probably work pretty good for those. And then you can fill out some of these other ones if you want. You can see I've already got some books put in places, but I did it in pencil in case I wanted to erase it and change them around. But <clears throat> I mean, I can make more than one path, so I can go like out this way, down this way, and around this way. I mean, you can do it however you want, just as long as you make a path from start to finish. And it just looked like it would be something kind of fun, it's almost kind of like a bingo, but with a path that you have to actually finish. And so, and then I also am going to be doing uh, Becca's 48 hour of Bookopoly because it's going to be on my birthday weekend since my birthday is on July 11th and so it's the 11th and the 12th so I figured you know what else am I going to be doing during this fun COVID time so I might as well just spend my birthday reading books so I'm going to do that and I only have one book I can show you for that because she will be rolling the dice or what, rolling whatever she does doing her little bookopoly thing and every I think 12 hours or something like that to get another prompt for another book to read so I can only show the one and then the other ones will be kind of secret TBR I guess because I won't know what they are until I get to them hopefully she does me good when she does her little bookopoly thing 
I'm a little worried about that part. <laughs> but also, um, let's see, from July 20th to the 26th is the reading rush. And I'm kind of going to loosely participate in that. Um, if I, I got books for that, and depending on what I pull, I might change. But um, I'm not going to worry about getting all the prompts on that. I'm just going to kind of loosely do it. If I do, I do some I don't. I'm not going to pressure myself into trying to read um, seven books because I think there's seven prompts, but we'll see how that goes. Anyway, um, that's a long introduction to my July TBR, but we're going to get to it, and so I'm going to go ahead and pull the first one out here and see what happens. Hopefully, it's good to me. Okay. Black cover. And my writing's horrible. We'll try another one here. Oh, one with uh, people on the cover. Oh! And a backlist arc. We'll use that for, it could be an e art too, but it's the backlist art. So, I know where that one's going at least. It's going to be my art pool. And so there you are. I will come back with the books I'm going to use for these prompts. Okay, so I've picked out my books for my uh, TBR jar picks. And so I will show you what those are. And so let's see, I've got for a backlist art... I went with um, A Beautiful Corpse by Christy Dory. This is the second book, I believe, in a series, and I haven't read the first one, so I don't know. I may have to try to get it. I can get both of them on Hoopla on audio, so that should be, like, super easy for me to do. But I didn't have the first one as an arc, but I did this. I guess I didn't realize it was part of a series. But this one is from 2019, so I really need to get to it, and so I'm going to do this. All I know, really, is it's about a crime reporter named, I think, Harper McLean, and a dead woman, and I think she might know who it is, a law student or something like that. I didn't really read a whole lot of it, because I don't like to read the synopsis on these kind of things. I just kind of like to go into them and see what happens. Sometimes they kind of tell too much. But I am excited to uh, read this, and hopefully I will like it. That's for my backlist art. And if you hear it raining or any thunder booming, it's raining a lot right now. So, which we needed. We really needed. And so, let's see. The next one is a black cover. And for that, I'm going to do... Uh, Mary Higgins Clark's The Two Little Girls in Blue. I probably had this on my uh, bookshelf forever. I probably got it in a um, used bookstore or something like that. And uh, I probably picked it up just because it was Mary Higgins Clark. I do like her. And I just, I don't know why I've never read it, but it's just been there. And this one is about um, the telepathy between twins. When two uh, little girls are kidnapped and ransomed, when they do what they're supposed to and pay the ransom, only one kid comes back. And so, and there's a note saying that the other one was killed on accident, an accident. But then the little girl knows that she's not dead and says that uh, she's afraid of the person that she's with. And only the mother, of course, believes the little girl and so they're trying to figure out what happened to the other little girl and so yeah, it sounds like it might be pretty good but it's mostly black on the cover so I'm counting it especially you know, the side says black author and uh, everything so I'm counting it as a black cover and so the next one is for let's see what No, nope, that's not it. Oh, people on the cover. And for that one, I found a strange looking little book that's probably been on here forever. But I'm kind of in a bit of a horror mood. 
And so I'm counting this as people. <laughs> they're dead people, but they're still people. So that's people on the cover. And this is called Unto the Sun by Chandler Morrison. I've never heard of it. I probably just put it on there because it was free and I liked the cover. And it's uh, when I looked to see what it was about, it's a vampire story. So it's a, about uh, a guy who I guess gets turned into a vampire and starts kind of wondering about his own uh, morality and the good versus evil and uh, being a vampire and all them kind of things. It's supposed to uh, be a horror, so hopefully I'm kind of in the mood for horror right now, and so I'm hoping it's good, but I have no clue, so we'll see. Never heard of the author? Don't know. Didn't even look to see what the rating was on Goodreads. We're just going to go with it and see what happens. So that's the books that I have for that, and then I will be right back with the rest of my TBR here in a minute. Okay, so I'm back with uh, the rest of my July TBR. I had to uh, write down and find pictures and everything like that so that I could show you what it was. It's probably not everything that I'm going to read because I'm a mood reader, but I did want to mention like the book that I'm going to be reading. I'm going to start off with reading with uh, Becca's 48 Hour Bookopoly, and then I do have my um, Reading Rush uh, TBR, and so I wanted to go ahead with that. And then I just have a few other books that I would like to read, or that I'm buddy reading too, so we'll just uh, get on with that. Got my handy dandy paper here. Okay, so for uh, Becca's Bookopoly, I think it was the uh, 2019 board that she pulled this from and it was to uh, read a paranormal or a magical realism book and I am buddy reading this series with my friend and so this is the third book and this is the book we're reading in July anyway so this is going to fit really well with that prompt since it is paranormal this is a uh, the Alexia Terabody series and it's about uh, Alexia and she's um, married to Lord Mekin and she's a petronatural and he's a werewolf so that's kind of a combination that really doesn't go well because she can touch him and turn him human and so you would think that would make for a pretty complicated relationship but uh, they're pretty cool together except for at the end of the last book I just wanted to smack Lord Macken and Macon and uh, right now he's not um, high on my list. And I know going into this one, I'm not going to like him either, but I'm hoping that things get resolved by the end of it. And I can't really say a whole lot about like what this one is about without spoiling the other ones because of that. But it it's a it's a fun series. It's got quirky characters, and I really like it. So I'm hoping that he gets redeemed in this one and I like him again and that it doesn't mess up the story arc and, and that I like it so fingers crossed and then I've got the reading rush which is from July 20th through the 26th and uh, the first prompt is to read a book uh, with your birthstone and like I said earlier my birthday is in July so it's Ruby and so I am reading this it looks oranger here than it does in person it's really more of a red color it just looks orange but uh, this is girl um, unframed by Deb Coletti and uh, it's not really something I normally read and but I'm really hoping that I'm going to like it I know it's about a girl who um, she discovers that her uh, mother, I think, is involved with somebody who's, like, dangerous or something, and how it affects, like, their life. It's contemporary. I don't do a whole lot of contemporary, but I'm kind of having hope, high hopes for this one, so I hope it don't let me down. And then the next one is to read a book that starts with the. I'm going to read... Um, the Vacation by Tim L. Logan. 
Sorry about that. Pretty bright cover. Anyway, I have no clue about what this is except for it's about, I think, a family on vacation and something happens. It's a thriller. I don't like to know too much about my thrillers. I read his first book, uh, Lies, and I really enjoyed it. I have the second one that he wrote, but I haven't read it yet. Shame on me. And so hopefully I'm going to like this one, and then I'll go back and get that other one that he's writ written. But yeah, this one is for the... Then the next one is to read a book that was inspired by a movie you've already seen. I had a hard time with this one. I couldn't really think of much. And then I just decided to go with Emma, which evidently I did not put a picture on my uh, Kindle. So maybe I can figure out how to put a picture here because I have new editing software. So hopefully <laughs> it goes okay. But if not, I'm sure everybody knows what Emma by Jane Austen is. And I've... Uh, watched the movie a long time ago. I haven't watched the new one because, to be honest, uh, the Mr. Knightley from the, like, I think 1990s version or whatever is my Mr. Knightley and nobody else will be able to do that. And so I haven't really cared to watch the new one. Maybe I will sometime, but uh, I've already watched it and I'm due for a reread. I haven't read Emma in a long time, so I thought I could listen to the audiobook and the audiobook is uh, narrated by Anna ben Bentinick. So hopefully I like her audio narration. I don't know. And the next one is uh, read the first book you touch. And to be honest, I didn't plan anything for this one. Uh, read a book completely outside your house. So, for that one, I picked a short, uh, cozy mystery called What a Meth by, uh, Jamie Lee Scott. This is, I think, book four in the Gotcha Detective Agency mystery. And the audiobook is, like, th almost four hours. Three hours and 44 minutes, I believe. Anyway, and, um, I don't know if I put down who was the narrator because I'm really bad with remembering that oh yeah it's Todd Todd McLaren and Gabra Zachman and I've listened to the other ones but the other ones before this only had Gabra Zachman on it so I guess they've decided to add a male to this and um, I don't even remember what the characters names are or anything and I even looked it up before I did this but Anyway, I've read three of them, and it's a series that I need to finish, so I thought this would be a good time to do that. And I go for a walk in the morning, and then I also have a garden that I work in, water, and all that stuff, so I figured a short audiobook should be able to get me outside and get it read. Then the next one is read a book in the genre that... Okay, that you want to read more of. And so I'm going to use this for that because I don't really read a lot of contemporary, but I have been um, asking for a few contemporaries trying to see if I can get into it. I have kind of enjoyed what I've read, but I haven't uh, read any that has pushed above three stars. So I'm hoping that I'll have one. Maybe this will be it. I don't know. But yeah, that's for that. And then the last one is to read a book set in a different country. And uh, for that one, I am going to use Emma since it's set in the UK. So we'll do that. And then the books that I have left over that I'm wanting to read this month. I am also buddy reading um, The Institute by Stephen King with my friend Barb and she's the one that I'm buddy reading Blameless with and we do one standalone book and then one series read and so this is our standalone and I'm actually already listening to this one and I can't remember the narrator um, Santino Fontana 
and he's actually pretty good. I like him. This is the first time listening to him, and so far, this is pretty good. I think I'm about, I don't know, eight hours into it. It's a long listen. That's why I had to get started on it, because I knew I probably wouldn't get to it all if I didn't, and I got it from Overdrive, and I need to get it listened to before it has to come back, but I enjoyed it. It's about uh, these kids who are being, like, kidnapped and sent to this institute. They have either uh, telepathy or something like that kind of deals that they call it TK or TP. And uh, it's not a real nice place. And it's about this kid, I think his name is either Luke or Lucas. Anyway, it's about him and how he's uh, trying to get out of this institute. And so far, it's been very good. And since I'm in kind of a horror reading type of mood, I am going to try to read Kill River by uh, Cameron Robic. I think that's how you say his name. I'm not really sure. Sorry. Uh, I've heard about this one on BookTube from a lot of other horror authors and authors, horror booktubers, and they really like this book. And I haven't heard anybody talk bad about this book so I want to give it a try and see if I'll like it too. I did hear from one that it was kind of slow in the beginning so I'm hoping that's not going to deter me because I don't like slow paced books but yeah it's about uh, a, an amusement park I think like a water amusement park yeah it's a river there River. It's a, a water amusement park and some killing and it's supposed to be kind of like an 80s slashers type. Don't know a whole lot about it, don't want to, but it looks really cool and I just love this cover. It's so cool. <laughs> yeah. And also, I was so excited to get an e-arc of this and so yes, I've got to fit this in and this is Peace, Talk by, Peace Talks by Jim Butcher. This is number 16 I believe got a lot of books in the uh, Harry Dresden series and I absolutely love Harry Dresden it's one of my favorite series and normally I listen to it because I love James Marster's narr narration but I knew it was gonna be a while probably before I get the uh, audio version so since I got this e-arc I'm just going to go ahead and get it done because I want to know what happens now I don't want to wait and I'll probably listen to it just for fun because I love James Marster and I did see that he was going to still be the narrator. I was kind of worried about that since it's been, I think since 2014 since he's put out Harry Dresden. So I wasn't sure if they could still get him. So I was glad to see that it looked like he was going to be the narrator. And so this is just about Harry Dresden, the uh, Chicago's only wizard in the phone book. And I can't really say a whole lot about what's going on because it is book 16 but I can't wait to read it. Okay. So I believe that's all of the books. I probably will read some more. That's only 11 books. I usually listen to a lot of audiobooks, and so I'll probably have a lot more of those, but I don't really know what I want to read. I want to leave a little bit of room for mood reading because I am a big mood reader. Also, there will be three other books, depending on if I can get to them, during the uh, Becca's 48-hour Bookopoly. I probably won't be able to get to that many in 48 hours. I'm not that fast of a reader, but there are three more prompts. And we won't know what they are until she rolls the dice. And I get to pick one either from her, 2000, her 2019 board or her 2020 board. So hopefully the board and her rolls are good to me. We'll see. But that's all I got for this uh, video, and so if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.